Let's begin now. Yay. I'm going to go here, here, and let's go. So we got integral calculus on our hands. That's where that should not be here. It should go down here. Thank you. All right. So we're going to start with this. So chapter five is about integrals. What are we trying to integrate? We'll see. Definition will come a little more alive to us a little bit later on. But let's go back to geometry. So here's our little problem from geometry is areas. So 5.1 is all about areas. Areas underneath something. And that's what integral calculus is? Yes. And it gets like super cool afterwards. Because once you calculate area, you can calculate volume, you can calculate everything else. So from geometry, uh, you guys tell me what? <clears throat> uh, you guys tell me what, um, what figures do we know from geometry that we can get area of? Like, give me some square, triangle, circle. We go to area of circle is pi r squared. Octagon, you have eight-sided stuff. Circle, uh-huh. Rectangles, squares. Uh-huh. Uh, thank you. Any kind of poly polygons, right? Any kind of n-gons, right? So let's go. Yep, we got this one. We got the rectangle, square, triangle. Oh, how about this one? Anybody remember the name of this guy? Close. I'll get a rhombus here in just a second here. <laughs> oh, trapezoid, too, here. This guy's called a parallelogram, right? It's like a rectangle slanted sideways. Here's your trapezoid that Noah mentioned. And the rhombus. Let's go to rhombus here. Here's your octagon. And then in Greeks, what, what they did is they just separate everything into triangles like this, because that's why triangles are important, because you can make them all into triangles. Here and here is the, there it is, rhombus or something called, is that a rhombus? Rhombus is elongated. That's a diamond. So if you elongate the diamond, depends. Because these sides here all have to be the same size. That's what makes it a um, that's what makes it a diamond. This one here is a that's a rectangle shaped sideways, right? And then if you extend this side and this side, that becomes a rhombus, right? Where these two sides are the same. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then, but here it is. Did we were we ever able to get a area of this with integrals? Yeah. So, <laughs> the goofy <laughs> shoe, okay. <laughs> so, so before we get to 5 1, we're going to take a little bit of time to go into Appendix E. Whoa. So, here's if you want to take notes, here it is. Here's Appendix E. Here we got to get some notation down. Well, <laughs> yeah, that it should be exercise one. The one is very, very small. The end of the X. Uh -huh. Long time ago. I think we did the end of algebra two, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. So this guy is the capital S in Greek letters, and then we use that for sum, but it's called sigma. Uh-huh. Fun little thing. Sigma. <laughs> All right, so write the sum in expanded form, and if you can, you can give you can give the answer, but you just want to write out the sum for sure. So here it is. This guy is called our index. Our index starts at 1. And it goes up to six. And when you get to six, you stop. That's it. So here it is. If I is one and the formula for this guy is I, we get a one. Then the index goes up one notch. So we start with I is equal to one. Then we go on to I equals two. And the formula says two, right? Because we're just plugging an I. And then the index goes up to three. And the formula says three. Index goes up to four. Formula says four. Index goes up to five. And then eventually six. And that's the expanded form. Good. Sometimes we'll be able to get an answer, and sometimes we won't. That's just the way it is. But in this case, I think we can. So you tell me real quick here. Anybody know the answer? 20, 21. Da -dum. 
Okay. So the index is one, we're only going up to three, but now our formula is I squared. So here it is with I being one it becomes one squared and then it becomes two squared and then three squared. Yes, so perfect. Emma's question, can I start I anywhere? Yes, so you can start I at, at two or three or four, yep. So you can, I, you can start the index anywhere you like. Normally we like to start it at one because we usually count stuff as a one, right? One, two, three, four, five. So normally that's the, that's the, and it's 14, perfecto. Okay, those are the easy ones. Let's get into a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna go this one, so yes. I'm a perfect timing here, look at this. So does it have to start with one? It does not, we can start it at five. What tree? This guy, it's it's the Greek capital letter for S. It's a whack looking. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Starting at five, and you're only going up to six. Not not times even. Oh yeah, have to get your calculators out, huh? Thank you. How did you break your calculator? Okay, so let's go with it. Expanded form is four to the fifth and four to the sixth. Perfect. Yeah, final number is those added together, and Luke said 5,120. And we'll see how far we get today. We might not finish my point. We'll see. That's a K over there, uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, let's go with it here. So, are we good with the calculator now? So, 5,120. So, so, now the question is this uh, Can I, do I have to use I as my indicator? No, we normally use I or J or K. Those three letters normally are used for it. So, I'm going to just use K for this one and then. This one, I don't think we can find the answer. This is just going to be in terms of x. So, so what is that going to be? x to the fourth plus x to the sixth. And then one last one, x to the eighth. And we just keep those. Those cannot be combined together. They're just going to be separate just like that. But we at least have the expanded form. Good. That's what we want out of it. OK. And then sometimes we don't go from one number to another number. Sometimes we go from one number to another variable. Good there. Everybody okay with D and C? Okay. How about next? Ooh, that's an N on top. Yeah, I go from three and I go up to N. So just to a different variable. Okay. So sometimes we leave it in the expanded form just like this. Sometimes we just simplify it. Just kind of depends what you want to do. Either one's fine. So let's go with it here. So if I go, oh, on top I have 
the three, but the bottom, I'd have a three plus one. You can keep it like that, or you could put in a four. Either way is just fine. We're good. You can write it as three plus one, you could put it four. So I go, let's see, I go now four, the bottom would be four plus one, and then on top now I have a five, and the bottom is five plus one, and I can keep on doing this for like a long, long time, because I don't know what n is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to put dot, 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 and I'm going to say I'm going to go all the way up to n, the bottom would be m plus one. Are we good there? So this one will expand for a long time until I get to whatever n is. I don't know what n is. Okay, we're good there. All this stuff used as we're going to use this stuff. Um, the other way around, let's go backwards. Tell me if it went too fast. We're good, good. I want you guys to do this one. So multiple answers here. If you can't start off with one, that's that's great. And But if you can't, that's fine too. Normally you should be able to start off with I is equal to one. So going backwards now, can you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and write this sigma notation for it? All right, so what do we get here? First one, just, I mean, just. Perfect, and just I, uh-huh. And so, yeah, notice on the bottom now, yeah, bottom, that one, first one actually could be a one over one. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. I like the fact that Noah sneezed and then Joe reached for a Kleenex and then he used it for himself. <laughs> okay, let's go with it here. So on the bottom, we noticed kind of very similar to the top, except for they're square terms, right? So this is two squared, that's three squared, four squared, and we're going to go all the way up to like 12 squared. Yep. So let's go with i is equal to one. And then what's my formula? One over i squared. And we're going up to 12 is when we stop. Okay. That's cool. That's kind of what you're going to have to do on the homework for appendix E. And then let's get into a few things here. Let's All right, another one. They kind of gave you this stuff already, yeah. Really Yeah, so from it's from zero to n. Perfect. Okay. So six just zero to n. Okay. 
just negative i to the i. I mean, negative one to the i times x. Perfect. Okay. It should be. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry. That should be I over here and I over there. We're good. So I and I. All right. The other way to do it is if we wanted to, if we wanted to force it to go to one, how could I make this guy to be going from one if I need to force it? Uh -huh. If I... Mm, mm -hmm. I messed up it here, though. So, yeah. So this this should be I minus one right here. I minus one, I minus one. Upper limit is I plus one or N plus one. <laughs> All right, we could do it with that one. Cool. All right, guys. Special cases, here it is. I would like to know a formula. So here it is. So I'm gonna one, two, three, four. I got five formulas to get to. I wanna create formulas, but if I am gonna to go to N, what I can do is that actually I can just get the answer right away. That's my special cases. So if I have this, if I go, I go from one to N of one, which one plus one plus one plus one plus one. And times, what's my formula? And Luke is correct. If I'm going to go from 1 to n of just 1, the answer is just n. Are we good there? And we can circle that, square it, whatever you need to do. Just kind of put it as a special case, right? This is a special. Does that make sense there? So any con, if we have a constant, in this case, it's 1, right? So if it's just... One plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, and times over, it's just n. That's our first special case. Cool, cool. The next special case, everybody wrote it down. Ready? So instead of one, it's just any number whatsoever. All right, what would this happen? What would this be? C is, a, C is a constant, right? So it's 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. But it's C all over again, N times. So C times N. So write this down real quick here. There's our NC or CN, whichever one you like. We are just going to multiply that constant by the N. So notice, yeah, we are just trying to get to one, right? The whole point is make sure that you start off with one. So right, there are five, five special cases here. So write all of them down, or else because we're gonna have to use each of these cases later on. All right, and then the one, the other one is this. Now let's develop this one because uh, no, we've developed these three. Um, do you guys remember? Uh, Frederick Gauss, remember? No, no, sorry, sorry. Carl Gauss, Frederick. Frederick. Yeah. <laughs> um, in fourth grade, his teacher tells him, hey, uh, count from one to a hundred. Did I tell you guys that story? Right? It's that guy chilling in fourth grade. And he found out, oh, it's 5,150, and he did it within like two minutes. 
<clears throat> and so let's do the more sophisticated form. Here's a third law. So it's the sophisticated form of Frederick's law. Here it is. I'm not going to go to 100. I'm going to go to N. But we're going to use the same type of method that he used. So think with me here for a little bit. We'll develop this here. So if I got I, an I is being notched up from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. And we keep on going all the way to N. Question is, what is my formula? <clears throat> I've done uh, 12. That's cool. 42. Okay, so here's what uh, a more sophisticated way of what Frederick Gauss did. He said, if I have this, bless you, bless you. If I just rewrite this the other way, if I just do it like this, notice that this is n minus 1, then there's n. It goes from 1 to n. If I had another one just like this, oh, special case, blah, blah, blah. If I had another one going like this, can I rewrite it the exact opposite way? Is it possible to write this the exact opposite way? So starting at 1, I'm going to start off with n. Is that technically saying the same thing, though? If I do this, n is on this side, n minus 1, and I keep on going, is that still the same? Will I get the same answer if I did it this way? Yeah, cool. Whichever way you add stuff, it doesn't matter, right? So then, Friedrich was thinking about this. Oh, well, if that is the case, class, tell me what this is. Tell me what, like, this one and this one added together, what would that be? N plus 1. How about this and this? Another n plus 1, is that right? Because it would be 2 plus n minus 1. And then if I go here, this would be here, and then this would be an n minus 2, right? So 3, 3 plus an n minus 2 would make n plus 1 again. So notice all if I go all the way down to here, what is n minus 1 plus 2? n plus 1, and that is so cool. So hold on. If I think about this, how many of these terms do I have? This one, this one. I have n of these terms, so hold on. But if I add these together, don't I have two of these? Is that right? I have two. I'm adding it twice, right? Perfect. So it's n plus 1. If I need to draw it out, I have all these n plus 1s, and there are n of these guys. Good? So you can write the next one down, right? Write this one down, because that's, that's the one we got to here. So the short version is I have two of these, and I added them together, and I get an n times n plus 1. If I divide by, I need to get this guy by itself. Divide by 2, because I, I added both of these terms together. Sweet. There's my formula. If I'm going to add, this one's going to be one that we're going to use a lot. If I add that term together to any kind of n, we're going to use this guy to find the sum. Box it in, and you're good to go. Okay, and then two others, we can do the same. It just takes a long time to do it, so I'm not going to. But if you want to explore it, so now the next one is, what happens if you have an I squared? And then what happens if you have an I cubed? How do we do those? We're good? So not going to give them, we'll develop the formula here, but I'll just give it to you. Circle them. Here is your formula for I squared. It's a big one. It is, it's N, N plus 1. That's See that part. Then there's a 2n plus 1 as well, divided by 6. That's the formula for i squared. We could develop. It just takes a long time. Okay, there's that one. And then the, how about i cubed? All on the same slide. This one's a fun one. Notice what the formula, what the pattern is. It is this, this. <clears throat> that is weird. what I find weird is this notice this is the formula we developed n plus n plus 1 over 2 to get the sum of the cube form it's just this the linear form squared I wonder if there's something there I wonder if there's some kind of uh... oh to the fourth uh-huh yeah or at least initially I thought it should be of the squared form right yeah that's weird and I wonder if this, if we go to the fourth, to the fifth, to the sixth, I wonder if this pattern shows up later on or not. 
or is there a combination between this pattern and this pattern? Then what's up with the n plus n plus one? Because technically n plus n plus one over two is still here. Is that right? It's still listed. We just have this extra two n plus one over three, right? We've got this little interesting other multiplier. That's kind of weird. Anyways, but those are the formulas. There it is, all five. We are jamming. So then I need you guys to find this. And so what I want to do You can find the value. You can find the value just by plugging numbers. Notice I'm going from three to six, right? That we can do what we normally did before. So notice I got a little problem here. The formulas that we have all start off with one. True, true. And they all go up to n. So if I don't have that in the mix, if I'm starting with three, I'm kind of stuck. I can't use the formula directly. Good. But this one's actually easy because this was just going from three to six. So we can do this the old fashioned way. So plug in a three into here, three, three minus two is a one. My iteration now is four, so four times two. Now I'm at five, so it's five times three. Six and ah, perfect. Uh -huh. Yeah, we might just have to do that. Mm -hmm. And we got 50, Noah says. I agree. Okay, that's the easy one. Those are just numbers. That's cool. Now we move on to this. I got I starting at one, which I like. Two I is what I value. And then I'm going to go to N. How do I do that? True, so technically you could take the two out in front and just deal with that right there. So that's that's perfect to do so. You could just leave the two here, right? Technically two is outside, right? And we're just gonna plug in the formula. The formula is n times n plus one over two, perfect. So once you get that, you're gonna get the sum of two i's. Can't say n is equal to n is equal to n. True, true. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Then you would do that. All right. Boom. So we got ourselves n squared plus n. Are we good there? Do a little bit more difficult. So notice on this one here, uh, that little multiplier of two. You could have just kind of snuck it to the outside and dealt with that little one there, right? Because technically you multiply two. So whenever you have a constant. You can always just put it out in front, deal with the, the pieces there as well. Okay, so cool, cool, are we good? This one, now we have a minus sign or a plus sign, whatever. Um, what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to move the, the sum formula into both of those, are we good? So notice the uh, i is kind of stuck, right? It has the two in front that's subtracting. You had the five that's multiplying. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to take this out, put it into two different forms. Two minus, good, good. Because I can get the sum, right? I can get the sum individually or I can get the sum in total. It doesn't matter, the sum is still gonna be the sum. Even though here it's subtraction, it still works. Awesome. Uh, cool, yeah. The only thing I was thinking about is this. I can pull out a two in front, and then what I have is I have a, a one. Right, because one now I know I have, that was my first form, right? I pull out the five in front, and there's my third form. Did you do it? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Sweet. <laughs> uh-huh.
<laughs> good job, David. That's awesome. Okay, are we good with this one? We're pulling out the two, leaving us with the one, because I know that one. That was our first form that we did. And then this one is our third form that we did. We pulled out the five in front. That's the third form. So you guys tell me real quick here, what was this one right here? What was the formula? Just N, perfect. Uh -huh. And then what was the formula over here? Perfect. Okay, let's use those formulas. So this guy comes in as 2N. This guy comes in as 5 multiplying N plus N plus 1 over 2. So simplify some stuff out. Yeah, let's see. Got that. Let's see this. I can multiply this little negative 5N to N and then negative 5N to the 1. So let's do that. Negative 5N squared over 2 plus or minus. Yeah, negative 5 into that. Anything I can put together? Yeah, this one. Let me move this out. So let me move it up here. Uh huh. Yeah, this one here. So I got a good common denominators here. 4N over here. That's a 4N. That stays the same. That stays the same. And give me the final answer. Uh huh. Perfect. Okay. That would work. All right. Are we good there? Cool. Okay, guys, that was Appendix E, and now I'm going to introduce 5.1, but I don't think we'll get to the end of it here, so not enough to actually do that. That was a, so on your homework, when you see your homework, there'll be 5.1, and it says, and Appendix E. We just finished up Appendix E. Cool. All right, let's get seven minutes left, or no, like um, 12. Ooh, it went over your nose. All right, so let's go with this one here then. So let's go with it here. Good now. Got color coded. Three. That's funny. Okay, class, let's do let's do one one portion here. We'll do one portion here. So here's what I need to do. Here's what we're gonna try to find. We're gonna try to find the area underneath the curve from x squared of x squared from zero to one. So let me draw it up. By one, yeah, but just to the start. So for homework, homework, you're probably just going to do Appendix E. So here's what I want to do. I want to be able to get the area. So this is that right there. Let's see. X squared goes like this. True, true. Goes like that. And so this is zero here. This is one over here. This is one. So from zero to one. And I want the area lighter. I want this area right here. Good there. That's what I want. I want to know what is exactly this area right there. That's the job. So here's what we do. <laughs> Uh, we can't find it directly because, oh, back to geometry. We can use 
hold on, we can use circles, squares, rectangles, trapezoids, right? We have all these forms from geometry. We can only use those. So can you somehow put a circle inside here? That doesn't make sense. Can you put a trapezoid inside here? Tri oh, triangles might work, yep. Um, and so as we as humans have thought through this and Leibniz came up with, let's use rectangles. Because rectangles are pretty cool in the sense that you can shape them the same way. And let's see what happens. Let's do it one way. Let's do it one way. So here's what Leibniz was thinking. Leibniz was thinking this. Here's my area. I'm going to one. And he said, how about if I do this? I know I'm going to over, I know I'm going to, it's going to be over. But how about this? If I break this up into maybe like four pieces. And I got to know this though. The maximum area this could ever be is if I did this. If it was just one big block. That would be area of one. Everybody agreed there? And the minimum area is going to be zero because I can just have nothing, right? So, but how about this? I'm going to use four rectangles. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to break it up into four different pieces. We're good? And I'm going to do this. I'm going to go from this piece here. I'm going to try to figure out what the area is of this little rectangle right here. I'm going to try to figure out the area of this little rectangle here, that little rectangle here, and then eventually I'm going to go all the way to here and get this little rectangle. Will that fulfill my area? Yes, is it too much? Yeah, I see a little bit. There's, It's over. It's actually too much right over here, right? So I'm going to over, over guess. But let's try it. Let's try it for the remaining part. So I'm going to say this. Uh, let's see, if I break this up into four pieces, everybody agree that's a one-fourth? then that means this is going to be at one half, true, true. And this guy is at three fourths, we're good. And what is my area here? So, oh, you know, notice each time I'm going to go one fourth each time away, is that right? So one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. That's a fourth and that's a fourth and that's a fourth. Okay, so I think I got this. My area, using my right-hand side, so R is for right-hand side, and four is the amount of rectangles I use. So here's what I got. I got one-fourth, because that is going to be my, my space from here to here. That's my width of my rectangle. My height of my rectangle is going to be whatever, wherever I'm at right here, and the function itself. What's my function? Squared. So then I go another fourth, and I'm at, where am I at now? I'm at, one I'm at one half for now, right? One half. So one half squared is going to give me my height. And then I'm going to, I go another one fourth, because that's my width. And my height here is going to be three fourths. And then I go one more width and my height. Are we good there? Can we calculate that? And Joe, can you close the door just for a second? Okay, can you calculate that one right there? Okay. One sixteenth, okay. That's going to be nine on top. I know that. Three fourths, okay. Uh huh. Perfect. Okay. So now I go, each one of these guys has to give me a 64. Tell me if you guys agree. That's a four over 64. Watch my math to make sure I don't mess up. And what's that on top of that four now? 16? Is that right or no? Oh. Oh, yeah, the last one, one fourth. Oh. Yeah, sorry, 64. There, there you go. Gotcha. Makes sense. 30 over 64, okay. And then reduced form would be 15 over 
32. Okay. okay. And then on a calculator, give me approximately what it is. Okay. Four, six, eight, seven, five. Okay. So. So here. Oh yeah, uh, u squared because our function is x squared. Our function is x squared. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's why you go. There. So if your function was x cubed, you would be cubing everything. Okay, guys. Real quick here. So we know this. We know we over we overestimated, but the overestimation is 13, 15 over three thirty two. We good. So let's do this the backwards way. Let's go one more. We got three minutes left. We can go one more. Let's go the backwards way, guys. Real quick here before we finish. Oh, let me go on to the next slide here. Oh, we'll finish this up. All right, class, let's go with it. With two minutes left, let's go. So I'm going to figure out the area going the other way. So, uh-huh. So guys, real quick here. So uh, now, notice last time what we did is we used the one-fourth as our starting point. That was called the right-hand side because we're using the right-hand side of our rectangles. What we want to do here is we want to use the left-hand side. And we're going to use four of them. So if I start off here, this is my first rectangle. Notice my still width is one fourth. Are we okay there? One fourth, one fourth, one fourth. But I'm going to use my left hand side. So my width is one fourth. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> width is one fourth. But now my starting point is zero. We good? Because I'm using my left side of my rectangle. And then so this one's going to be this rectangle. And then the one half is going to go up to here. And then the one, the three fourths is going to go up to here. Notice I'm going to underestimate my rectangle now. So let's go with it. That should not go. So one fourth is my width. That's always going to be the same. But my point is zero. My other one's going to be here. My point is now one fourth squared. Are we okay there? Then the next one's going to be one half. My width is one fourth. The one half squared. And then I'm only going to reach to three fourths. So this is going to be one fourth times three fourths. Everybody's still okay. Everybody's still tracking. Not done yet, mentally. Let's go with it. That's a zero. That is going to be a 164th. That's going to be one sixteenth. Uh-huh. That's going to be 1664. That's 64 over 9. Everybody good there? So then I got myself, let's see, times 4. And what do we got here, guys? We got ourselves 13, 14. 14 over 64, reduced down to 7 over 32. Yeah, approximately 0 0.28. So here's what we got. Here's where we're stuck before break. I know it's somewhere between. 15 over 32 and 7 over 32. Somewhere oh, between, right? Somewhere between there. I'm not sure what, where it is, but at least I got some kind of approximation. Good. And so Archimedes, when he was trying to figure out the area of a circle, he did that. It's called sometimes try to undervalue and overvalue at the same time. Um, so for homework, as far as homework is concerned. Appendix E for homework, don't do 5-1 yet. We haven't finished 5-1 yet. All right. And yeah, uh, yeah, 4-9, please do.
All right, guys, enjoy your break. See you guys in 10 days. 10? 10? I turn him for five, but it is.